Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma bad Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Hayyakum Allah Ayyu ala ahabba Continue on in our study of Shara Sunnah Lil Imam Ismail ibn Yahya al-Muzni Rahmatullahi alayhi wa rahmatin wasiya We reach the portion of the treaties where the Imam he mentioned about paradise and this should be the goal of every believer and in fact without doubt every Muslim has this goal in mind that they want to be from the people of Ahl Jannah from the people of paradise and not to be from amongst the people of the hellfire Wa'iyadhim Billah وَإِيَّاكُمْ مِنَ النَّارِ So, Imam al-Mazni, Rahmatullahi alayhi, Rahmatin wasiya, he mentioned in his book, Shara Sunnah, uh, this very important point about the people of Jannah and about paradise because also as many of the other points in his book illustrate that the people of Ahl Bid'ah, the people of innovation and desires, that even over the concept of paradise and aspects or masail in issues pertaining to paradise and pertaining to the hellfire and pertaining to the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and pertaining to punishments and issues of faith they disputed over. They disputed and departed and deviated from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Iqtiqad, the creed of Ahlu Sunnati Wal Jama'ah. And so for this reason, Imam Muzni, he dedicated uh, this short, uh, he dealt with the issue of uh, refer, referring, referencing uh, paradise and that this is a part of the creed of Ahlul Sunnah that we believe in Jannah and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he tabarak wa ta'ala says fi kitabil kareem wa ma khalaqtu al jinn wa al ins wa ma khalaqtu al jinn wa al ins illa li'abudun i have not created mankind in the jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me so letting us know our divine purpose is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the reward of that worshiping him tabarak wa ta'ala alone is paradise is jannah and as the salaf used to say regarding this life that this life is the dar al-amal ad-dunya dar al-amal and the hereafter, the next life, is the time to reap the rewards of what you sowed in this life. So Imam Muzni, he said, اللذاتي يتلذذون وبأفضل الكرامات يحبرون uh, Imam Muzni Rahmatullahi Rahmatan Wazia He said regarding paradise He said and the people of Jannah The people of paradise Will be enjoying themselves in paradise On that day Meaning the day of judgment and this is why this chapter comes in after the Day of Judgment. So really, when you look at the Tartib or the organization of Imam Muzni's uh, treaties, you see he talked, we had the chapter, the short, uh, he dealt with the issue of death. And he dealt with the issue of, you know, Barzakh, you know, the next stage uh, in life, the life of Barzakh. You know, the life of the grave, that you'll either be punished in the grave or you'll either have comfort in the grave. Then he dealt with the uh, the day of resurrection, of being resurrected, and some of those, some of the issues uh, relevant 
or that will happen during that time period. And then he mentions, uh, you know, paradise. And this is the end result. And the uh, for those who worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and avoided the major sins or are forgiven by Allah Azza wa Jal and that every believer will eventually enter into paradise. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be from amongst them and to be from amongst those who have no uh, punishment uh, or any atonement for the sins that we did in this life. Ameen. So Imam Muzani, he said, and the people of Jannah will be enjoying themselves in paradise on that day and they will be delighting in all sorts of pleasures. And they will have the best favors, the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed upon them. So this is the jaza for Ahlul Jannah, for the Mu'mineen. This is the reward for those who believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and did righteous deeds and, and followed the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam according to the methodology of the Salaf of this Ummah. This is their their reward for that. This is the reward for not uh, indulging in sin. And this is the reward for restraining one's desires. And this is the reward for avoiding bid'ah and khurafat and shirkiyat. This is the gen this is the, the jannah that we all hope to attain. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be from Ahla Jannah. Ameen. Imam Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentions in his Sahih about some of the characteristics of the people of paradise. What are some of the characteristics and what are some of the pleasures uh, that Ahlul Jannah will enjoy when it comes time to enter paradise or to be of those who are the inhabitants of the hellfire. Imam Bukhari, he mentioned the hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu who narrated that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the first batch which will enter Jannah will be like a full moon on the 14th night. The next batch will be like the brightest star. Then they will be in different classes. They will neither urinate nor defecate nor will they blow their noses, nor will they spit. Their combs would be made of gold, and their incense burners would be of aloes wood. Their sweat would smell like musk. Their manners will be like that of a single man. They will be 60 cubits tall like their father Adam, alayhi salatu was salam. Ibn Abi Shayba, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned in his book, he said, they will look like their father Adam, alayhi salatu wasalam, meaning the people of paradise, that there will be resemblance between Ahla Jannah and Adam, alayhi salatu wasalam, the father of mankind. In another hadith, Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wasallam said, some people will enter Jannah whose hearts would be like the hearts of birds, meaning that they will be kind. And that shows us that those are some of the attributes that we should possess in this life if we wish to get the jaza in the hereafter. Meaning if we wish to get the, 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 the excellent and the, the most befitting and the most beloved result, which is paradise. Who from amongst us does not want to go to paradise? So then that means we need to spend our time in this life trying to earn paradise, trying to gain the mercy of Eliza Wajel by being merciful with one another. In another uh, hadith, Abi Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah will say to the people of Jannah, O oh, people of Jannah, they will say, Labaik, O oh, our Rabb, and Sadiq, Sadiq, Allah will say, are you satisfied? They will say, why should we not be satisfied when you have given us what you have not given to any one of your creation? Allah will say, I will give you something better than that. 
they will reply, O our Rabb, and what is better than that? Allah will say, I will bestow on you my pleasure and will never be angry with you. And this is in Bukhari as well. So it shows us that the people of paradise will be absolutely have full satisfaction. That there should be no question in our minds that, and this is why these, uh, these are mentioned in the Hadith books, but as they are a part of our ittiqad, they are a part of our creed, they are part of what the Muslim believes and what the Muslim should look forward to is related in these narrations of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they form our ittiqad, they form our creed. And that's why Imam al-Muzni mentioned that in Shara Sunnah. And that's why many of the A'immat al-Sunnah, the Imams from Ahl al-Sunnah wal Jama'ah, in their books, they mention these points, uh, these these aspects and these masail, these issues that that are uh, that are all from our creed. They mention these in these books because these are a part of our creed of what's going to happen. This is ilm al ghayb. This is knowledge of the unseen that we don't know, but we believe, and we believe it because we got khabar from men. Who did we get? Uh, news of this and uh, to, to, to know and understand these details from from Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the last prophet and messenger alayhi salatu wa salam and may our peace and blessings be upon all the prophets and messengers alayhi afdal salatu wa salam because they were the best of mankind and they were sent as a guidance for mankind and they were sent with the message of tawheed and the message of how to get to paradise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولٍ إِنْ نَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُوا تَعْقُوتٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, and we sent, لَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ and we sent to every nation a messenger to worship Allah alone and avoid the ta'gut and avoid those things uh, which are falsely worshipped and taken as gods besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the heavens and earth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be from Ahlul Tawheed and be of those who he loves and is pleased with. Allahumma inni as'alaka hubbuk wa hubbu man ya hubbuk wa hubbu li kulli amalin ballaghani hubbuk. Ameen ya rabbil alameen. In another narration, another narration of uh, Abi Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the people of Jannah will look at the dwellers of the lofty mansions, which is a superior place. This is a place in paradise. In the same way as one looks at a brilliant star far away in the east or in the west on the horizon, all that is because of their superiority over one another in rewards. On that, the Prophet, the people said, O Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, are these residencies, meaning these lofty mansions, for the Prophets, which nobody else can reach? The Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, replied, No, by Allah in whose hand my life is. These are for the men who believed in Allah and also believed in the Messengers. So that shows us that the rewards are immense in Jannah, and that we can't even begin to count the many blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this life and we only have a limited way of conceptualizing the rewards and the beauty of paradise. And another benefit that we gain from this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam regarding paradise is to know that people tafawit. People have different levels. The believers in this life have different levels, and in the hereafter they will have different levels. That's why those people who fasted, that they will have the al-bab of rayan, they will have the door of rayan to enter into paradise. And those people who were martyred in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will have their own gate uh, to enter paradise. And all of these special deeds that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and is pleased with that people will be will have the ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be able to reap 
those blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed upon the people for the small deeds that they did in this life. Because all of this recompense, all of these uh, blessings and these rewards are from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we, have, we are so full of shortcomings and we have so many sins that we're not truly worthy, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees us as worthy to uh, relatively. And this is from his, his great na'mah, his great ni'am, his great blessings upon his weak servants who sin by the day and sin in the night. And as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Adam that all the children of Adam commit sins. And the best of those who sin are those who repent. So that's an encouragement for us to repent before the day of judgment comes to us and repent so that we, we can win the favor and the mercy and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that hopefully we will be the inhabitants of paradise without any reckoning or any punishment. Jabir, Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhum narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, people of Jannah would eat in it and drink but would not defecate nor urinate but it would be like belching in sweat of musk and they would be inspired to praise Allah and glorify Him as you are inspired to. Letting us know that we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this life and in the hereafter, Ahl Jannah will also praise their Lord Tabarak wa ta'ala as the Mala'ika do. <coughs> Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, who enters Jannah will not be wretched, nor will his clothes be old, nor will he grow old. So the people will be young in paradise. They will be youthful. They will be handsome and beautiful. And they will have the most beautiful of clothing and drink the best of foods. And these things we know from the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In another hadith, Sahl ibn Sa'ad radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrated to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, In Jannah there is a tree so big that in its shade a rider can keep going on for a hundred years without being able to cross it. Abu Hazm <coughs> said, I told that to a Nu'man ibn Abu Azia al-Zuraqi, and he said, Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu ta'ala anhu told me that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, there is a tree in Jannah so big that a fast rider may travel for 100 years without being able to cross it. <clears throat> In another hadith, in the hadith of Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrated that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, There is a market in Jannah, and every Friday they will come to it. There are the north, there, there the northern wind would blow in scattered fragrance on the faces and the clothes of the people of Jannah. And they would become more beautiful than they were. And they would return to their families being more handsome. The families would say, by Allah, you look more beautiful than when we saw you. And they will say, and so are you more beautiful than when we saw you last. This is the beauty of Jannah. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu mentioned a very important, narrated a very important hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam letting us know, and this is to show us about this life and how not to be deceived in this life, but in fact do those things which may seem difficult, but those are the things that will get you to paradise. 
Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrated that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Jannah is surrounded by all kinds of disliked and undesirable things, while hellfire is surrounded by all kinds of desires and passions, letting us know that all those things, the things that you want to indulge, you want quick satisfaction, you want, you want to just satisfy your urges, you want satisfaction now, that most of, more often than not, those things are the things that lead you to the hellfire. But the things that require patience and perseverance, being patient when difficulty comes to you, being patient in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and doing His commands and avoiding His prohibitions, those things require patience. They require restraint. They require, require that you are not quick to indulge in your desires and quick to indulge in sin. Those are the things that surround Jannah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be of the Sabirin. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. In a hadith, the hadith of Haritha ibn Wahab, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he narrated, I heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, Shall I tell you of the people of Jannah? They said, Yes. He said, Every weak and poor, obscure person whom the people look down upon but his oath is fulfilled by Allah when he takes an oath to do something. Then he said, Shall I tell you of the people of the hellfire? They said, Yes. He said, They are all those violent, arrogant, and rude people. Those are, that's an admonishment. That's a warning. That is for telling us about the inhabitants of Jannah. The qualities to gain and be rewarded paradise from Eliza with jealous, being humble, fulfilling your promises, fulfilling your trust, being someone trustworthy, being someone truthful, fulfilling your oaths. It doesn't look... Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned in a sahih hadith, قَالْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَنْظُرُ إِلَىٰ أَجْسَادِكُمْ the Prophet ﷺ said, Verily Allah doesn't look to your, your, your shape and your, your beauty. But rather He looks to you, looks to your deeds and your hearts. So that lets us know Iman is the most important uh, attribute that we need. It isn't about skin beautification. It isn't about hair uh, additions. It isn't about uh, other physical traits. But rather, it's about doing, having the libas at Jannah, the libas al iman, the, the, the clothing of iman, the clothing of faith, by being faithful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by practicing righteousness by believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all that Islam came with, by practicing all of that and by declaring it on your tongue, all of those things, they all make up faith. All of that is a part of Iman. And though that's what is considered and important to Allah Azza wa Jal, who created all of this. He created the beauty that we see. He created the beauty that lays within humanity. He created everything. Tabarak wa ta'ala. But what does he look at? He looks at your lakin yandru luqulubukum wa a'malukum. He looks at your hearts and your deeds to see if you're worthy of being one of the inhabitants of Jannah. And I'll just mention one last hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about this important the important topic of Jannah and from the characteristics of Jannah. And we rarely get this opportunity to talk about Jannah. And this is what the ulama sunnah, they wrote about and they talked about. Because it is an encouragement for us to do those things in this life in order to attain paradise in the next. The Prophet wasallam said, Jen, uh, the, paradise, the dwellers of paradise are three. One who has authority and is just and fair. And a merciful man 
with a kind heart towards relatives and every Muslim. And a man of chastity who does not stretch his hand in spite of having a large family to support, meaning stretch his hand that he doesn't beg and ask from the people. And he has big responsibilities, but he works for his to the best of his ability. The Prophet wasallam also said, the dwellers of hellfire are five. The weak who lack power to avoid evil and the followers among you who do not have any care for their family or their wealth and one who is dishonest and is a miser even for a little, even though, even just about something very simple. And a man who cheats you day and night toward your family and wealth. And one whose language is obscene. So those are characteristics of the people of the hellfire. And those are characteristics in which we must do our best to avoid. And we ask Allah the Almighty, Azza wa Jal, to bless us with the with Jannah to Firdaus and forgive us of our many, many sins and bless us with Ilm al Nafi, Ruskin Taibu, Ilm al Mutakabilin, those things which will help us get to Jannah. Wa sallallahu wa sallam, ala Nabiya Muhammad, wa ala Ali wa sahbihi wa sallam.